entering to you first, the fighter standing in the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with white trim. Official weight, 142.8 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina Tecate Azul, vistiendo calzoncillo color azul con blanco, con un peso de 142.8 libras. Presenta un récord de 29 victorias, 5 derrotas, un empate y 21 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Professionally, he stands with 29 victories, including five losses, one draw, and 21 of those victories coming by the way of knockout. Representando, representing Planepantla, Estado de México. He is a three-time world title contender, tres veces contendiente por el campeonato mundial. Pablo Cesar Cano! And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner, wearing black trunks with silver trim. Official weight, 143.4 pounds. Y su rival, en la esquina Tecate Roja, vistiendo calzoncillo negro con plata, con un peso de 143.4 libras. Professionally, he stands with 22 victories, six losses, and seven of those victories coming by the way of knockout. Presenta un record de 22 victorias, 6 derrotas y 7 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout, representando a su gente de Riverside, California, USA. Mauricio, el maestro. Herrera. And here is your third man, Ray. Corona. Productor. Right here is good. Aquí está bien. Touch gloves. God bless. Ray Corona, the referee for the main event. Let's look at the tail of the tape, Doug Fisher. At age 27, Cono is nine years younger. He is one and a half inches taller, but Herrera has a slight reach advantage. It is loud in here. Mauricio Herrera, Riverside, California, about an hour away. He has a lot of friends and family in attendance. Pablo Cesar Cano from Mexico. We get ready to go. They don't even touch gloves. Herrera in the black with the neon green trim. Cano in the light blue trunks. Hey, they can't be uh, gentlemen in there. No, no time to be sportsmen when the stakes are this high. No, there's a lot on the line. Taking a look at Herrera, it's one thing to lose consecutive fights when you're 25, 26. It's one thing to lose consecutive fights when you're 36 and you're not a huge draw. That is the plight of hard luck Mauricio Herrera. And Steve, you had an excellent article with Mauricio Herrera talking about his last fight against Frankie Gomez on the undercard of Canelo and Khan. He admitted to you that he wasn't in shape getting into that fight. More of a fat camp. Had to take off a lot of weight. In fact, his last fight prior to that was July of 2015 at the LA Sports Arena. How long ago was that, guys? Uh, that building is actually demolished now. But how ironic is it? The storylines going into that matchup was Frankie Gomez. Yeah. And did he need a fat camp to, to Gomez, make weight? Whatever happened to that guy? He went all Frankie Gomez. <laughs> we saw him in to Vegas. borrow a line from you, Steve. <laughs> Alan, uh, Paulo Cano fought Alan Sanchez and lost the night before Mauricio Herrera had fought. Outside of T-Bobo, a fight that was just ugly, but not a good style fight. Frustrating night for Cano because he was in there with a freakishly tall welterweight with a good reach and, and uh, a, a disciplined stick and move specialist. And Steve, you said in that story on UCN Live that this is one a fight where they're fighting for their promotional contract. Why do you say that? Well, just looking at the comments of Roberto Diaz, he, he makes it very clear the loser of this fight, their career prospects look very bleak. They really are fighting for relevancy. And, and sometimes when promotional companies, at, in, in situations like this, Beto, when they match up their own guys, it's not necessarily official, but it is kind of an unspoken rule. This is a bit of an elimination bout within the company. To the right hand landed by Herrera. Immediately, way more energy, way more bounce. 
and enthusiasm from Mauricio Herrera than any of those 10 rounds that he had against Frankie Gomez here in just two minutes. Well, Beto, look at the weight. He came in at 143.4. I believe that fight was a full-fledged welterweight contest. Mauricio Herrera is much better when he's closer to 140 than he is 147. His last fight against Gomez, he fought at 146. Before that, 39 a couple times. I know this is where he feels comfortable at 47, 48, 46. Easy with him. 10 seconds to go in the opening round. It's scheduled for 10. Mauricio Herrero, Pablo Cesar Cano. I like the activity of, of Cano in this opening round. Doug, you said you like the activity. He's about as experienced as a 27-year-old fighter can be. When you look at his record, it's not just the number of rounds that he has. And he has uh, 185 total pro rounds, slightly less than, than Herrera, who has 213 total pro rounds. But you look at the caliber yeah. of opposition, the version of Eric Morales, who wasn't completely spent at that time. He gave Morales a hell of a fight before being stopped, I believe, really on, on facial cuts in the 10th round. And uh, he gave Sugar Shane Mosley a tough fight over 12 rounds. Mosley won that fight on points, but it was like 115, 113 across the board. And Doug, the one night where I thought he may have got the brass ring, but simply was taken from him in what I believe was a hometown decision in Brooklyn. Yeah, I, I, thought, he beat, people... I thought he did enough to beat Malinaji. Malinaji yeah. outjabbed him, but he outslugged Malinaji. He, um, he has very heavy hands. And when he's punching in combination and really letting those hands go, he does a lot of damage. And that was a split decision loss to Pauli Malinaji for the WBA belt back in 2012. And his next fight was against Shane Mosley. He lost that one. That was in Mexico, actually. 12 rounds. Pablo Cano. Mauricio Herrera is a fighter that, it, it, obviously in boxing, everybody has a crazy story, interesting story. But not many people start boxing professionally at the age of 27 and get to the level where he's at. He had to earn his way in those dark club shows that nobody's uh, at. It's very rare underneath heavyweight, Steve. Yeah. Somebody like in between lightweight and welterweight to, to have that late of a start and to get this far. Actually came up as a club fighter on the Thompson Boxing Circuit. Uh, they run a very good program over there based out of Ontario with Alex Campanovo and Ken Thompson. Really made his mark on the world class scene by upsetting a previously undefeated Ruslan Provodnikov. I believe that was in about 2012 and what was a very, very good fight on Friday Night Fights. You were close to it. It was in Nevada, 2011 against Provodnikov. Went the distance, but Moisio Herrera, you mentioned it in that club show. Where did he get the nickname El Maestro, the teacher? Because he was going to do those Thompson shows. He was always the opponent, where at times he was fighting for no money because by the time he ended up paying the commission, the fees, he had no money coming his way. He was schooling the undefeated younger fighters. And somebody said, you know what, you're the El Maestro. You're schooling them, just like my brother, the principal, El Profe. You're, you're schooling these people. And that's how the nickname stuck with him, because he was schooling these youngsters in the ring. Caught eyes. And Steve, you mentioned Provodnikov, Hank Lundy, Juan Perez, Mike Gallas. That's who he's gone up against. And then the losses, the disputed ones against Danny Garcia in Puerto Rico. A lot of people say it was hometown cooking. And then Jose Benavides. I thought he won both those fights. Good action between Herrera and Pablo Cano building up for what should be a good 10-round fight. Like I said, he's a uh, he's a ring-savvy and experienced 27-year-old. He knows those old pro tricks. Pro since 2006, 185 pro rounds coming into this fight does Pablo Cano. Hello to the Westside Boxing Club watching us right now. The Salcedo brothers with their young fighters, Tino Nava. Rafa Gramajo, and a very, very dedicated, loyal fan base, Westside Boxing. You see their shirts everywhere. Good club out there in Mid-Cities, Los Angeles. Third round of action, scheduled for 10. Mauricio Herrera, Pablo Cano. And this is the type of fight that Cano prefers, unlike his one against Alan Sanchez, where he was chasing the taller fighter. He doesn't have to go looking for Herrera. Herrera's already got a cut under his left eye. Facial swelling and cuts has always been a problem in Herrera's career. And we're joined by Hall of Famer and President and Founder of Golden Boy Promotions, Oscar De La Hoya, the pride of East LA, the Garfield Bulldog. Oscar De La Hoya joining us. What do you see in this one so far? It surprises me that uh, Herrera is the one that's uh, cut in this fight. Uh, oh, it's cut we're now. So, we're oh. so used to 
we're so used to uh, Cesar Cano. Uh, uh, yeah, he uh, swells up and as up. well. Yeah, um, Do you remember his fight with Eric Morales? Exactly, with Eric Morales, and he did actually get uh, 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 some of that uh, uh, upper bone uh, in his eye uh, shaved down, uh, so he won't get cut. So maybe it is working, and uh, it's a great fight. I think it's gonna heat up in uh, in a couple of rounds, and we're gonna see the tremendous, tremendous fight. So it's an even fight for me. Are you surprised that Cano has come out as strong and as fast as he has in the first two rounds? I, I'm actually not surprised. I've been here, and he's been looking excellent. In, in the gym, he's uh, he's trained hard. He's really, really motivated to win this fight because it's sink or swim for either guy. So I think uh, Cesar Cano uh, is coming out strong. He is the younger guy, I believe. Yep. Um, um, Herrera looks in, in in form. He looks uh, uh, he looks uh, determined, uh, uh, focused. But uh, you know, I mean, sometimes uh, age does uh, creep up on you uh, overnight. Herrera 36, Cano 27. Oscar, you just said it. Sink or swim. Why do you say that for this fight? Well, because uh, look, both guys are, are uh, um, you know, have have a few losses in their career. Uh, both guys uh, um, are are at crossroads. Uh, where I believe, uh, you know, the guy who uh, the guy who loses uh, maybe goes back to the drawing board, and the uh, the guy who uh, wins uh, is going to have uh, another shot at beating, uh, being on a high-profile card. Final seconds of the round between Mauricio Herrera and Pablo oh, Cano. Good action from Cano here, closing out the round. And that'll do it. Joined by Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar, we saw some of the younger prospects tonight. The Golden Boys stable is just stacked with these young kids that are coming up. How happy are you with the way they're developing? I'm, I'm extremely happy, extremely proud. Uh, we have great matchmakers. Um, next year is is going to be a, uh, a breakthrough year for all our prospects. Uh, we have uh, um, some exciting news coming up um, for 2017, uh, w which means more shows. Oh, that's good for uh, us. Which wow. is great for everybody. <laughs> um, more high-profile shows, okay. uh, if I can say. I can't really let the cat out of the bag yet, but... Uh, it's good it's, news for this young stable. It, it's great news for the young stable, great news uh, uh, for the stable that is ready to make that jump uh, uh, to HBO and uh, championship level fights. December 17th, Bernard Hopkins, his last one, but that card is just stacked with these young kids that yes. are coming up. Joseph Diaz Jr., the co-main on that one. Joseph Diaz Jr., um, uh, we also have a tr uh, 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 an exciting uh, card uh, the night before here at yep. uh, Fantasy Springs Casino. Uh, where Shabransky and Sullivan Barrera. Exactly, which is going to be a great, great fight. Um, so uh, we want to end off the year uh, with a bang, but uh, believe me, 2017 is going to be uh, huge, not only for Golden Boy, but for boxing. we got a good scrap building up right now with Pablo Cano in the blue trunks, taking over from Atizapan de Zaragoza, Mexico. In the state of Mexico, that's where he's from. El Dome de la Or, the, the Demolisher. Why did he get that nickname? A writer saw him in his second fight. And as usual, the media, they'll give you that nickname. He was destroying his opponent, stuck with it, and he's kept it ever since. I think it fits his style. He's got really heavy hands, and he's very busy. Frank Arana, I believe, to keep him up. I believe it was Eric uh, Morales who, uh, who uh, told me that uh, he's never been so hard in his life uh, by a fighter. And uh, 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 Cesar Cano, uh, I believe, was that fighter who uh, he was uh, talking about. And Morales won that fight, stopped him in the tenth, and he yeah. stopped him in the tenth. But that's Both obviously guys the, were busted up. That's you that's recall. that's exactly the uh, the, the pedigree that uh, that uh, uh, Eric Morales is. I mean, he's a championship fighter, Hall of Famer, um, who uh, you know it took uh, took everything uh, to to stop uh, Cesar Cano. Who does Cano remind you of, Oscar? Style wise, is there a fighter that you may have fought or? And that you one was low. Grown up. Oh, that time wow. is called. Ray Corona is in the center of the corner. That one was real low. Not Tijuana, that might have been near El Defe. He'll get up to five minutes to recover. Yeah, that might have been that might two. have been Cabo San Lucas. <laughs> might be down there with Pepe Gomez in Cancun, <laughs> man. Ray <laughs> <laughs> Corona gonna call him over. Uh, and a point deduction taken away. He had been warped for hitting on the belt, but I think that one was so egregious that a point is taken away. And Christian with the replay. Swiping right, it was oh. a right hand, yeah, left, right on the cup. Well, it was right, it was right on the cup, um, um, maybe the belly button area, um, you know. But those punches do hurt. They, they, 
they have a, a, a sense of, a, of a, a, you know, that punch where sometimes it just paralyzes you just for a split second. Uh, and your legs go out on you. So, uh, you know, Herrera's doing uh, smart by taking all the time he he, uh, he needs to uh, recover. Do you feel it for the rest of the round? Does it take some strength? It some sometimes out of takes punches? a few rounds to, uh, to recover from it. Um, and you don't feel it right where you got hit. You feel it in your legs. So why is it that you, you never see a fighter take like two or three minutes? Is that because maybe they're afraid of getting cold or being no, criticized it's, it's by the, the pressure, crowd? It's, yeah. it's the pressure from, from the crowd, from the fans. From I mean, when you're a fighter, you have a lot of sense of pride inside the ring. And, um, you know, when you're when you're hearing those boos against you, uh, you know, you either want to step up, knock your opponent out, or when you're down and you got hit by a low blow, you want to get back up and, and show and prove that you're, that you're macho. And it's you might be a little bit pissed off for being hit there <laughs> if you think it was Blake. Oh, it, it looks like Herrera's kind of pissed off right now. So. <laughs> That's the voice of the Hall of Famer, Golden Boy Oscar De La Hoya. Yo, Mauricio Herrera is cut underneath the left eye. Well, Pablo Cano's left eye is swelling also here in the fourth round. You see the punches of Cesar Cano, how they're, uh, they, they're, they're, they're more effective uh, when he lands. Herrera's not really doing too much damage on Cano, but those... those Thundering punches that he's landing on Herrera are doing some damage. Herrera's going to have to go to the body, take some steam out of the younger man's punches, because he's not known for his power. McConnell's got a good chin, so he has I a think great chin, um, and, and the body is the only way to uh, to win a fight uh, if, if if you're going up against a fighter like him. Final seconds of the round. That'll do it for four. Trincano and Herrera. That is Mauricio Herrera's wife. Back here at ringside, Bethel Durant, Doug Fisher, and Oscar De La Hoya. And Oscar, you mentioned the night before with Sullivan Barrera and Slava Shabransky, the guy yes. you've gained the name Chingonski. Chingonski. But that's also one that you have Roy Tapia, Ronnie Rios going at it. Two, two of our two of our prospects that we build on, on LA Fight Club. Night, yeah. club. Uh, uh, it's it's going to be a great card from top to bottom. Uh, but again, I, I like seeing my guys uh, either sink or swim. Uh, you, you have to, uh, at a certain point, uh, test these fighters. You can't like, baby them, right? You can't baby them. Not and, forever, and, and, anyway. Not forever. But um, there's fighters like uh, Gibson, who we just tested yeah. today. It was a great fight. It was a tough fight. But he, uh, he, he passed the test with flying colors, and now we move him on to the next level, put him on a high-profile card, and that's the way you build a fighter. Uh, to uh, to hopefully uh, one day get to that championship level. Yo, we have the digital platform, ringtv.com, where you can watch and go to the Golden Boy YouTube page, the Facebook, everything else, and check it out. That is just giving exposure to everybody around the world. Jason Quigley, for example, an Irish fighter. Right. Everybody in Ireland is watching him now. It's it's a, such a cool platform. It can only get better. Can't and, it? and he's fighting on uh, the uh, December 17th yep. part uh, uh, under Bernard Hopkins. Uh, uh, that's going to be a great fight. Yep. I mean, for being his last fight, he didn't pick... Uh, he didn't pick a, uh, a softie in there. So, uh, yeah, he I'm, picked I'm a legitimate top 10 contender exactly. who has punching power. He does have punching power, comes straight forward. And uh, look, I mean, Bernard Hopkins, uh, he takes care of himself. He's uh, 51 years old. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we're obviously crossing our fingers and hoping that, uh, that uh, you know, on December 17th, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't uh, like, you know, like we say in boxing, doesn't turn old overnight. Right, father time eventually wins over everybody and we have to keep in mind that Bernard Hopkins has been out of the ring for two years. Exactly. So is that a factor? Well, he's been out of the ring for two years uh, uh, competing. Right. Uh, I, I, and, and he's always training, which is a huge difference. If you're out of the ring uh, uh, for two years and you're not training, then it's a, it's, it, it can be a big factor. But the fact that Hopkins is just a machine, um, it, it's, it, I don't think it's going to be uh, difficult for him to... Uh, to uh, adjust uh, um, December 17th against uh, Joe, opponent, Smith, Joe Smith. Buy your tickets now for that one, December 17th. Also, December 2nd, we will be at the Belasco Theater, the last show of the year at the LA Fight Club. That always sells out. Pablo Cano in the blue trunks, working Mauricio Herrera, who's in the black from Riverside. We're seeing some really good exchanges here. It's Seems like hot action, but it's also a lot of rough stuff in there. And so That's far, I think the slight edge to the younger man. Exactly. And but Herrera, he's uh, you know he's pulling some tricks out of that that that, that hat of his. Um, you know he's he is a very crafty, savvy uh, fighter. Uh, he knows how to adjust. Uh, he knows how to survive in there. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see when we uh, go past the sixth, seventh, eighth round. Uh, see how it kind of reacts if it goes that long. That's a good point. Herrera is called El Maestro for a reason. 
because he has a deep tool case. I mean, everybody goes back uh, to uh, Herrera versus Garcia, where uh, the world saw uh, Herrera beat Garcia that night in Puerto Rico, and uh, ever since then, um, his his uh, uh, you know uh, fighters uh, have been very careful um, in uh, uh, when they when they when they face Herrera, and uh, because he's a, like you said, he's a maestro, a master inside the ring. He didn't turn pro until he was 27, too. Incredible. How many world championships you already have at 27? <laughs> <laughs> Good scrap between Mauricio Herrera and Pablo Cano. The main event, the Fancy Springs Resort and Casino in Indio, California, thanks to the founder of the Hall of Famer, the Golden Boy, the pride of East LA, oh. Oscar De La Hoya, for joining us tonight. Hard round to score right here. It's a tough, to tough fight. <laughs> tough fight to score. Who, um, who do you think won that round? Wow. Well, Herrera, see, Herrera comes back at the end, the last 20 seconds. He comes back strong, so it's really hard to judge. I mean, I. I would have to. St I would give it a. <laughs> I, I would have to give it to uh, to Kano for landing those hard punches um, uh, in in the uh, in the first couple of minutes of the fight. But I wouldn't be surprised if one of the three official judges scored round five for Herrera. And Tragos yeah, right, exactly. is, jam exactly. is jamming Oscar during uh, this show well, right now. We're good. We're good. Oscar, you you good. you sticking around one more round, or are you taking off? No, I'm good. I'm, we're, good. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be uh, you know I'm, I'm enjoying this. You're I like this. this. Yeah. All right, there you go. So I don't I don't want to take away uh, uh, Steve Kim Steve Kim's gig here, but uh, <laughs> hey, well, sorry, he Steve. Play. You got the brocha going. <laughs> November, right? It is exactly. Uh, you know, just to bring some awareness to the uh, colon cancer for men. So uh, you know, I might I might just keep it. We'll see. Looks good, man. I've been I've been called I've been called uh, uh, Vicente Fernandez. I've been called uh, <laughs> Pablo Escobar. I've been called I don't know all sorts of Mario things. Mario Almada, you're, 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 you're the Latin Tom Selleck. <laughs> I'm showing my age, Magnum <laughs> PI. Mauricio Herrera in the black trunks. Six round of action. Both fighters cut on the left eye. In our main event, and you can start feeling the buzz in the building at the Fancy Springs Resort and Casino. Herrera with a lot of fans with him. 36 years old, 27 year old is Pablo El Demoledor Cano. And for, and for fighters watching at home, um, I'm, I'm actually very surprised that Cano has not uh, 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 cut in this fight. Uh, he's holding up very well. I mean, uh, the doctor, whoever he used, is uh, excellent uh, because Cano's a fighter who uh, bleeds uh, when he signs the contract. <laughs> The procedure that he had is where they kind of like file down like of the orbital bone or exactly. the cheekbone. Uh, it's or that, it's, just it's the, the orbital bone uh, mm -hmm. around the eye. They shave it down. Um, and uh, yeah, you're you're uh, not healed from any type of cuts or but you're still uh, susceptible to uh, you know, a cut, but um, it, it is holding up well. Kano in the blue trunks. <laughs> Downstairs, already lost the point for hitting below the belt early in the round, early in the fight. And Oscar, you continue to load up the Golden Boy stable with these young kids, the 18 year old. You just signed a uh, Ryan Garcia. Uh, Ryan Garcia, who, uh, who I believe, um, again, we have a great stable of young fighters. Uh, got the I, youngest stable, I think, out of any U.S. promoter. Guys between the ages of 18 and 20. I, I can't think of another promoter that has that many right. teenagers. And, 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 and good fighters and solid fighters who can who can become somebody. So, uh, I mean, like this fight here. I mean, every young fighter uh, aspires to be uh, on these guys' level. So uh, this is an excellent fight. Well, we saw the youngsters tonight. Cesar Diaz, 19 years old, the TKO. Joshua Franco, 21. Unanimous decision. Oscar Duarte, 20 years old from Parral, Chihuahua. With Gabriel Soto in his corner. The fifth round stoppage. You know who I like? I like uh, the kid from San Diego, uh, Gomez. Okay, not not Gomez. Yeah, Gomez is man. a fighter who uh, he yes. looks like a beast. He does look like a beast. He's a hard worker. He uh, he throws everything with conviction, and and uh, you know he uh, he he just eats, sleeps, and breathes boxing. I mean, I've, that's what I love about these young fighters. They're hungry. Yeah. I've had fighters who have sparred with them who are former world champions, guys with 30, 40 professional bouts under their belts, call me up and say, yes. man, that dude pushed me more than anybody. I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned uh, Ryan Garcia, yeah. who uh, is the real deal. Um, I've, I've seen him uh, fight. And uh, he he does uh, have that speed, that power, that conviction, you know. Uh, you don't say that just to say it either. 
you say it, you mean it right now. Yes, I mean it. Uh, I mean, we do have the best young talent. And uh, like I said, next, I'm excited next year because we're going to be giving them uh, tons of exposure. Well, all these kids watch the Ring TV show. Virgil Ortiz was here in attendance, too. The Virgil kid, Ortiz, out exactly. Of out of Dallas. You were raving a phenomenal about him, fighter. Incredible fighter. Um, tremendous punching power. Uh, great kid. See, one thing I, I love about uh, Golden Boy Promotions, a stable, is that not only are they great fighters, but they're just they're good kids yeah. outside the ring. I yeah. mean, Jason Quigley, you know. I mean, uh, they're great interviews. Joseph yeah. Diaz, and you know that's that's what it's all about. If you want to make an impact, if you want to become not just a champion, uh, but a super champion or a, or an, or an idol, or you know, you got to have that charisma. You got to have you got to put on a to. show. Exactly, exactly. Not These only, guys are putting on a show. That last a tremendous round was show. tremendous. And another tough round to score, I think. Mauricio Herrera in the black, starting to step it up a bit. 36 years old, said his last fight against Frankie Gomez. Great uppercut. He, he yeah, had to lose sneaky. weight just to get into shape. The terrible camp, he said this one was great for him. This is a good scrap between these two fighters on a crossroads fight. As Steve Kim said, the loser goes home. Well, this is the seventh round where, uh, uh, like I said, these are. this is where Kind of like the championship rounds. If it was a 12, you know, uh, uh, if it was a 12-round fight, this is where the fight starts. Um, this is, I believe, where Pereira should uh, pick it up, uh, use his uh, craftiness, uh, his his ring generalship inside the ring, if he wants to frustrate Gano. But it seems like uh, Gano is, uh, is is doing a great job in there, uh, holding him off and using his power. And Pereira's chin shot. holds up. Yeah, that was a heavy left from Cano that he ate. Even on another look, nice right hand, hand, right to the ear. As Herrera just keeps his hands wow. down. Well, Herrera wants to draw Cano in. He's eating some shots and he's trying yes, to draw him in. he is. And Cano's letting his hands go. Wow. Herrera's keeping him down. Wow. Cano going one, two. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Cano, el dominador, is looking good here. The fighter from Mexico in the blue. Mauricio Herrera, his chin, can eat some big punches. He is... Woo. Kano's doing what he should do as the younger man. Exactly. He but you, be but you, Exactly. You watch Herrera come back. Now here he comes. A minute 27 to go in the round. Both of them hitting on the belt. Both of them licked the Ray Corona and says, no, let's keep going. Let's see if Herrera can press Kano in the final minute of this fight. Or this round. Baiting a man, trying to get him tired, trying to punch himself out of well, the round. Well, he, he is trying to get him tired, but uh, like I said before, though, Cano's punches are effective. They're doing damage. Herrera's Ooh, punches are not that damaging. Some damage. Big exactly. right hand. Herrera still hasn't got his hands back up. Herrera is just stubborn, man. I mean, he could be a, a savvy guy in that ring. He could be crafty. But he can also just be a tough SOB. He can. I mean, like I said, this is sink or swim, and both fighters know it. Herrera oh, going for the uppercut, getting that's a shot of his own. Body work from El Maestro. That's what you want to see from the veteran. Actually, they're both veterans. One is 36, one is 27. I love the uh, I love the thundering, the thunderous uh, the punches. That, I mean, you can hear, you can feel them here ringside. It's, it's incredible. Like that one right there from Camilo. Unbelievable. I mean, whoever's Body watching uh, on Ring TV live, uh, on Ring TV, um, I mean, if you've never been to a live fight, I mean, it's a must. It's a must. It's it's a whole different experience when you're here live. This is a great fight. And, and these it. guys are giving the fans their money's worth. The people in attendance here, they're seeing two guys give 100%. It's 100%, yes. But Herrera always does. Good round, good action between Herrera and Cano. And, and, and if you've noticed, <coughs> Pano is not cut, which, yeah. which, is, which is saving him in this fight. Because typically, normally, he bleeds in the first or second round. This is listening to the corner of the red eye. You fucking kill them? Esto dos rounds. He's fucking trying to kill you. Usa tu inteligencia. Usa tu inteligencia. Pero ahí les llamo. Come on, boy. 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 Come you see the replays, but in Herrera's corner, you're somebody speaking Spanish cook. and somebody speaking English. Right. Exactly. Herrera eats. Herrera getting swarmed against the ropes. He's evading some punches, but he's eating some of these shots as well. Good effort from, from Cano. That's a nice Beautiful right, right hand, hand to the ear. As Herrera tries to crowd him and work the body of the younger man. 
I thought that was Cano's round. Coming out aggressive with Moise Herrera. In the eighth Herrera, round. Yes, in the eighth round. And uh, like I said, he, he is the veteran. He knows how to use his uh, his experience. And But we'll see if he can uh, keep uh, Cano away. I like the aggression from Herrera. I think he needs to make something happen. I'm not going to say his career is on the line, but his status as a contender or even a French contender is on the line. He loses exactly. his fight. I think most people in the industry are going to view him as a gatekeeper. Exactly. A respect, uh, you know, a, a, a respectable, respectable one, obviously, right. but uh, a guy you, who's you obviously know that he does not want that. He no. wants to keep on climbing that ladder and hopefully one day get to that world title. No, no veteran wants to be viewed as a stepping stone. Exactly. Blood from the nose of Mauricio Herrera. Swelling underneath his left eye. You know, and Oscar, and I'll say this, great. Herrera's corner, well, somebody speaking English, somebody speaking Spanish, but who do you listen to? There was like too much confusion, it seemed like, in that corner. Well, I mean, there's there's a, there's a sense of uh, uh, desperacy uh, in, in the ring, uh, uh, and that's not good for a fighter because it, 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 it confuses you and it makes you think that uh, that your corner doesn't have, uh, uh, you know, doesn't, uh, not that they don't believe in you, but uh, they, you know, they think that they're uh, maybe a little uh, worried that you're uh, uh, losing the fight. Like, was there any instruction? Like, <laughs> exactly. You can be bilingual, but there was a lot of confusion. <laughs> Good body shot from Herrera. Can no action without the phone. More body work. Herrera looks like he's looking for that one shot to end it. Like he's trying to load up on punches. It yeah. makes for a great he's fight, a but it's puncher, not good though. for him because exactly he's not a power puncher. He's doing some good work in here, though. It's, you know, he had a nice moment there, particularly his shots to the body. But one at a time. 22 and 6, Mauricio Herrera. 29, 5 and 1, Pablo Cesar Cano. These last two rounds are going to be very interesting. And Herrera is, uh, he's not happy about some of these body shots yep. from Cano. I know, that I can tell by his eyes he believes that they're borderline or, or, or south of the border. He's not going to complain about it, though. Canoe's landing some of those on the thigh, the Charlie horse. Ooh, Another that was one. low. Yeah, that was and low. there it is. All right. Ray Corona jumps in right away. He's already taking away a point. He's going to give him the time. Will he take another point? Interesting. And Herrera is a fighter who's not going to quit, obviously. He's a fighter who's going to take the five minutes, maybe, that uh, that uh, you're allowed to and, uh, and take the breather and then relax. But then again, Herrera's a proud fighter, and he might just take one minute like he did right now. Yeah. See if there's a point deduction. There point. Is. Hey, this is a huge break for That's Herrera. A break. So another Second. point deduction here in, in round eight to Kano. That was low. And another point. Umbalo drop him is what the instruction is from the corner of Pablo Cano, who's sitting right next to him. This is his trainer, Pablo Cano Sr., yelling for his son to knock him down here in the eighth round. Good action, good fight. Ten seconds to go in the eighth between Pablo Cano and Mauricio Herrera. Two here he points. Comes. Oh. That's ten seconds. Uh, if Herrera can, can legitimately win this round, it's going to be a 10 8 round. And it can be a close fight. Absolutely. I believe whoever wants to win, they have to win these last two rounds and win them big. Having fun, Oscar? I love this. <laughs> I love this. I can, for the first time, watch a fight without signing autographs. <laughs> oh, I was about to have a selfie with you, but no. <laughs> Oscar, this Saturday, uh, turkey giveaway from Golden Boy Promotions, isn't it? Yes, it is. The turkey 20th anniversary. 20 years already. Oh, it's exciting, yeah. I mean, it's it's something I do every year, and uh, it's nice, it's fun, it's uh, it's rewarding is what it is. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited that we can continue uh, giving back to the community and, uh, and uh, you know, just uh, serving uh, families that are that are in need because there's a lot of families out there who, who are not going to eat, who don't have a turkey uh, for Thanksgiving. So we're, we're very happy that that uh, the De La Hoya Foundation can do this. Cool. And this is going to be at the school? The, the <coughs> I'm sorry, it would be uh, at the uh, uh, De La Hoya High School? Yes. On Lorena. And then afterwards, we go to El Tepeyac. <laughs> at the I'm still trying to win that T-shirt to eat uh, eating that big burrito. I, I tried it. I tried it. Nah. They gave me the shirt, but I, I can't wear it. <laughs> Shame. Manuel will get mad. 
<laughs> Good the Durant, Steve, Steve Kim somewhere, Doug Fisher, and the Golden Boy, Oscar DeLoya, watching a good one. What does Cano have to do in these last two rounds, Oscar? Well, I think Cano has to just keep on putting more pressure, throw more punches, uh, push the fight, um, um, and win these rounds clearly. Because I think uh, I think that the fans might have something to do with uh, with uh, uh, who the, the the judges are scoring this fight for. And Herrera uh, is and, the and crowd is, favorite. Exactly, and it is a close fight. So uh, I mean, look, whoever comes out strong and lands more punches and wins the rounds convincingly, I think wins the fight. If I'm in Cano's corner, I'm telling him just to focus on the head. No more body shots. You just can't risk it. Exactly. You can't I risk mean, one, another one point more deduction. And, and he can actually be disqualified. And that would be that would be terrible because I, I would, think he's had one of his better. If performances. I was him, I would aim for the chest. Oh man! See, no there more body shots, Conor. Exactly. You gotta just, yeah, right. Aim for the aim chest. For the aim chest. for the shoulders if you're gonna hit the body. If you're not gonna hit the head. Two points have been deducted from Cano already. Ray Corona watching closely, already warning him, and giving him the look. Body shot landed by Herrera. Going up there, just Cano. And if I'm in Herrera's corner, I say focus on the kid's body. Mauricio Herrera, always game, always comes to fight. A completely different version. We saw him against Frankie Gomez in Las Vegas on the undercard of Canelo and Khan. Yeah, win, lose, or draw, this is the type of performance that we've become accustomed yep. to from, from Mauricio Herrera. Just a gutsy, gritty effort where you see a lot of craft, but you also see a lot of metal. A lot of heart. I mean, these both fighters have a lot of heart. I mean, the, the conviction, the, uh, you, can, you can just see it right through their eyes. I mean, both guys want to win, and that's what makes great fights. I can tell Kano's in tremendous shape. He's fought at a very fast, high-volume pace all fight. Exactly. Looks in great shape. Um, He's looking good. He's looking sharp. He's looking focused and determined. Pano from Tlalnepantla, Mexico. Now what word means the middle of Northeastern. That's where he's at. Up in the altitude, gets some training in, gets the working in. And he's looking good through nine rounds here, against Here comes the crafty Herrera. fighter. The last 10 seconds. Trying, trying to steal, trying to steal, that, steal round. that round. Wow, what a fight. What a, a fight. A good one. So a good one, go to the last round. I mean, this is this is an even fight. This is a, a, a one point fight uh, for either fighter. That's how um, I see it. It's uh, it's close, it's uh, entertaining. I mean, this is what people come uh, to watch boxing for. I mean, these these are world ranked fighters who are uh, at, at their best, I believe right now. And uh, look, like whoever wins, uh, moves on to that uh, that opportunity. There might not be a winner. Because there, on there, my card, if Herrera wins this might be a draw. final round, and we, it's a draw. And we might have to do it again. And thanks to everybody for okay. tweets. Ring TV Live hashtag. Appreciate it. Saw them all tonight. They are loving Oscar the commentator right now. Oh. And uh, Mario Almada is another one for your brocha. <laughs> <laughs> As El Sonidito is jamming right now. El Sonidito's going. We're teaching Doug Ramon nice. Ayala. We're teaching him the Tigres Norte. He knows Beautiful. Tucanes. He knows what's up. What is he going to teach us? Boxeo. <laughs> hey, he called the fight for Aguascalientes before. He's legit. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Tenth and final round. Mauricio Herrera in the black. Pablo Cano in the blue. It's been a good scrap as they go at it. Two points have been deducted by Cano. Could be a factor into the judges' scorecards. Yeah, going into the 10th round, I have Cano up by 1.85 to 84. Wow. I would have him comfortably ahead if not for those point deductions. Exactly, exactly. We'll see how the judges have it. You never know. You ever think about that, Oscar, going into the last round with the judges you do? Absolutely. I mean, it takes me back to uh, when I fought I Corte. I mean, that's a perfect example. I mean, you have to, I, I dropped uh, I Corte and I had to finish the fight strong. You know, that's that's what you do when uh, when you think that it's a close fight or you're behind. And there you hear the corner of Cano, ultimo round. It's your last round. They're telling him to pick up the pressure. Knock him down is what they want him to do. Pablo Cano Sr. is a trainer in the corner. Back, 
Good shot landed by Herrera. Cano with the body shot. And I can hear Cano's corner. They're telling him, you know, this is it. This is the last round. Basically, empty the tank. Don't hold back. Sierra close. Right. Last Combination one. from Cano. Herrera, just, the last couple rounds, Herrera's just thrown one punch at a yeah, time. Yeah, he needs to work. Needs to work, yes. And, and, and you hit it on the nail, um, nail's head. Is uh, You never want to finish a fight with uh, five gall gallons left in the tank. You want to just it. empty it and, uh, and uh, you know, and, and, and try to win the fight. Hey, win, lose, or draw, if you give a enough effort, exactly. if you give everything, the crowd, the most crowd, fans will want to see you the again. The crowd sees it. The promoter sees it. Everybody sees it, and and you uh, and you have uh, you live to uh, to see another uh, another big fight uh, um, ahead for yourself. These guys are working hard. Win, lose, or draw. I would love to see both guys again fight whomever. And yeah, they make for good fights. Been a good action-packed fight from the opening bell between Mauricio Herrera and Pablo Cano. Action-packed, giving the fans exactly what wow. they wanted to see tonight. Herrera Beautiful. is exhausted, yep. but he's uh, getting some revenge for those low blows. <laughs> some well, you know Herrera's below coming the strong. Bell line. These last 10 seconds, watch Herrera come. Wow, what a fight. What a fight. Wow. Fans on their feet, Beautiful. as they should be. Beautiful. That'll do it. Ten excellent rounds. Well, I had a great time. We had, we got we saw a good fight. What right a there. great fight! Wow, thank you, thank you, Oscar. Thank you for helping the, us out. The crowd is in attendance. Thanks for putting the show together. And we will see you uh, December second. December second, Alley Fight Club. Uh, December sixteen, right here, and December seventeen, our final show. And then we have tamales after that. There we go. Pablo Cano. Thank you, thank you, Oscar, for joining us tonight. Mauricio Herrera, Pablo Cano, crowd on their feet, thanking these two warriors as they went at it. What a fight, ladies and gentlemen. As Ray Corona came over and said it, Pablo Cano had a cut on his head. That was from a punch. And the judges will have it. Dougie, I think you have Cano winning with a slim margin, right? Yeah, 95-93. That would be a wider margin if not for two point deductions for low blows in round four and eight. Now, if though in, in those rounds, if one of the official judges scored that round for Herrera, yeah. that's a 10-8 round. Herrera could be up on a card. Oscar DeLoya was supposed to join us for a round. He stayed for the whole fight. The he fight. was loving it. How'd you, you know, see it from the side, Steve? Honestly, uh, if I were you guys, I would have preferred Oscar over me, too. Uh, from my vantage point, it was a little bit obstructed. I think Kano carried the action right around from round three to about round seven. I think he built up of enough of a lead. I think Herrera really is at the end, though. He still has his heart and his guts. Don't know how much he has left physically, Physically, though. yeah. No. He looked like he just he just ran out of steam. Yeah. You know, effort, fighting though. on muscle memory yeah. and pride in those final rounds. You could really see it. And Twitter, we see the tweets. They love this fight. Action packed. They better. Win at it. Two warriors just battling back and forth. And, and you gotta, you gotta appreciate the effort that they gave. Yeah. They didn't leave anything in the tank. Seven good fights tonight. Here's our main event result. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Después de 10 asalto, nos vamos con la decisión de los jueces. Judge, el juez, Sergio Caiz, scores it 95 to 93. 95 to 93, a favor in favor of Herrera. Pat Russell scores it 97 to 91. 97 to 91 in favor, in favor de Cano. Alejandro Rochin scores it 97 to 91, 97 a 91. For your winner, by the way, of a split decision, su ganador por la vía de la decisión dividida. Tlalnepantla, Estado de México. Pablo César, el demoledor Cano. Pablo Cano gets his 30th victory with a split decision. Over Mauricio Herrera for Steve Kim, Doug Fisher, and Oscar DeLoy on Bethel Durant saying thank you for watching.